Hello? Ned, I need your Ned's expertise. I see what you did there. This is about Deirdre, isn't it? Yes, we need to distract her. You have to ask her out on a date. I have to what? Just take her out for lunch. Stall her for a while. But what if people see us? I'll get a reputation. Ned. Okay, I'll do it. It's weird, but I'll do it. <sighs> Thanks. I'm passing the case to you, Ned. Ned, reporting for duty. What's the deal? I waited for you for an hour. I'm sorry, I ran into traffic. All right, fine. Don't let it happen again. Isn't that exactly the same thing you were wearing before you got changed? No, it's completely different. I can't believe you didn't even notice. I was wondering if you could go grab some food together. Yes, I would like that. Were you able to distract Deirdre? Yes. Great. I'll call Bess or George to go see if she's left anything behind. Hi, Nancy. Ned's got Deirdre distracted. Can you see if she's left anything behind? Drop off anything you find at the station. You got it. I'm passing the case to you, Bess. Bess, reporting for duty. This is from before the fire yesterday. We need to get this to Nancy. the case to you. Nancy Drew taking over. Power ballads, the number one cause of running red lights. Wait a second. This puts her at town hall right when the alarm was switched off. Hi, Nancy. 
I need you to take over. Time to help Nancy. Hey! You got a red light ticket near Town Hall the day of the fire. What were you doing there? Just passing by. I was speeding because I heard that neighborhood was full of dangerous criminals. For example, arsonists. Catch you later. Later. I can't use my phone here. Hello, how can I help you? You're fighting a lawsuit about the land the old town hall stands on. Yes, I'm in government. You want a full list of the suits I'm dealing with, grab a notebook and clear your calendar for the rest of the week. What was going to happen with the old town hall? There is a proposed land use issue at the moment. We were thinking of dismantling the structure and replacing it with something more relevant to the city. It's nothing to get excited about. These things take years. Is the town hall in the Historical Society's list of protected properties? Of course. That building is very important to this town. So that means that no one could knock it down to build something newer, right? Well, that's the gist of it. You wanted the building to burn down so you could sell the land, didn't you? If I were you, I'd cool it. Understand me? Bye! Bye! Hi. I'm passing the case to you. Nancy Drew, taking over. It's your turn to take the case. George, reporting for duty. That must be what Nancy's dad was getting for her. It's your turn. Nancy Drew taking over. I need to check this against the chromatogram results. Which accelerant was used? The fire was started with isopropyl alcohol, not gasoline. Adding this to the evidence against me will help prove I didn't start the fire.
Hi. I need you to take over. Time to help Nancy. Hello? Any word on the sample? Yes. It tested positive for isopropyl alcohol. It would take quite a bit to start a fire, so let's keep an eye out for a stockpile. You should take over. I'll take it from here. This is everything I need. Once I correctly match all the evidence to the suspects, I'll be all set. Can you take a look at this? Be right there for an evidence check. Hmm. Looks solid. Looks like you just got yourself a get-out-of-jail-free card, detective. Yes, I'm out! Nancy, how are you adjusting to life on the outside? Fine, thank you. I'm not in the mood to do an interview. That's okay. Everything you say will be off the record. You're still holding your microphone. <laughs> Sorry. Habit. Still holding it. All right. You're good. Word of warning, I will get the exclusive. I always do. Why wasn't your van at the fire? It was. I just came separately. I share the van with other reporters sometimes. Can you tell me a little bit about your van? I never pictured myself as the kind of person to drive around in a van. But I have to admit, this one is pretty cool. Why is that? First thing, it's less of a van and more of a mobile action center. I spend more time in here prepping stories than I do at home. Why are you playing me up as the villain in the media? I'm just doing my job. I'm letting the world know about all of the suspicious things you've done. You should be reporting on the truth not trying to grab a better job. My life is at stake. Mine too. And anyway, what good does telling the truth do if no one can hear you? You have the reputation of being the first on the scene. How do you do that? When news breaks, I get there first. Yes, I've seen the ad. I mean, how do you make it to the scene first? It's a secret of the trade. You were at the scene of the fire so fast. How did you manage that? It's my job to be ready at a second's notice. Some people think I'm just lucky. I prefer to think I'm just that good. Is there a way I could get in touch with you later? Good question. Why don't you take one of my cards? Is this your cell phone number? Yes. Do you mind if I look around in the van? Yes. For a variety of reasons, Nancy. First, it's mine, so no. Second, I have dirt on everyone in this town in here. And as a journalist, it's my ethical duty to make sure that all of the embarrassing footage I've got stays private until such a time that it is fit for broadcast. You mean, like, blackmail? No. No! Is that what you think of me? It's not blackmail. It's fact-checking. I have to balance the individual's right to privacy with the public's need to know. You didn't exactly extend that courtesy to me. Didn't I? I think the public needs to know everything it can about the criminal, I'm sorry, alleged criminal activities of the local self-appointed do-gooder. See you later. Bye.
so glad you called. I should get going. I'll see you soon. Look who's out! Glad to see that you could get them to see sense. Do you need anything? If you need anything... Thanks. I didn't know you were following my case. Couldn't help. Small town. I want you to know that I didn't doubt you not for a second. That means a lot. Trust me. I know. I know what it's like to be in your shoes. It's the worst feeling you can have. You know, your friends really worked hard to get you out. I know. I should have worked harder myself. It's probably too late, but anything I can do to help you, anything you need to know, I'm your guy. What do you know about Tony? She railroaded you. Practically dropped the police at your door. Either she just hates you, or she's up to something that only you could crack. Can you tell me anything about the fire? Anything at all? You know, I, I wish that I could. I, I already told everything I know. Except... Except what? Okay, I went in. You what? I went in. Into the building. I saw you come running out. You, you looked scared. I just knew it wasn't you who set the fire. And the reporter was just standing there, like she was waiting for you to come out. It wasn't right. Why didn't you say anything? It wouldn't have mattered. No one listens to me or trusts me. Will you testify to that? Yes. But it's not enough. You, you need more evidence. Why did you go into the town hall when it was burning? The time capsule. Bennington told me he'd put the magnifying glass somewhere I wouldn't find it for years and years. I always assumed he meant in the time capsule. I was just hoping to finally be able to say, See? I didn't do anything. But I guess it's gone now. Why did you become a detective in the first place? I was pretty young at the time, and back then my parents owned a shop much like this one. I wasn't much into the news then, but I knew in those days people didn't much like immigrant families like ours. One night, someone threw rocks through the plate glass window, completely shattering it. My parents were very upset, but they were afraid to go to the police. It wasn't done where we were from. So I took it upon myself to catch the culprit. Did you? <laughs> Never did. But that's when I learned that even a small, nice-looking town has its secrets. I decided I wasn't going to put up with secrets anymore. Why did you give up on being a detective? It wasn't a choice. The cases stopped coming. I'll let you go. Good day. Look what the cat dragged out of the jail. Good to see you were so concerned. Oh, I'm sorry if I was misleading. I wasn't concerned. I want to know what you were doing at the fire. Why were you there? Look, I don't care about the stupid clues challenge. I really don't. The only reason I was in it was because my dad never shuts up about how I need to be active in the community and blah. Then why were you following me? I assumed you were cheating. Why would you assume that? Because I was cheating. I thought we were all cheating. That's why I thought it would be fun to catch you in the act. But instead, you did something super crazy, which I did not anticipate. I didn't set the building on fire. That's cool. Just so you know, you do do a pretty great impression of someone who has recently burned down a building for no reason. Why are you hanging out here today? Can you tell your friend to stop spying on me? It's distracting. I'm not spying on you! The fact that you responded proves my point! Oh! Shoot! Thanks for being so helpful, giving Ned all the information. Just looking out for my number one buddy. <laughs> right. Your boyfriend's cute. And you were in the clink. I think I'm blameless here. Well, I think... Relax, Nancy. I'm not one of those girls. I was just window shopping. Anyone can tell he's not going to budge on the you situation. It was just 
nice to spend a little time with him instead of the idiot boys on campus. I swear, you think they're gonna get more mature in college, but they just head the other direction. See you later. Bye. Nancy, happy to see that you're doing all right. Just so you know, I've been pulling for you this whole time. That's not what I heard. Well, you know what they say. Don't believe half of what you read and anything you hear. Including now? I see that your reputation is well deserved. What do you want? Tell me about the fire. What were you doing? I've been over this with enough people already. I was out, I saw smoke, I made a call. Did you put pressure on the police to arrest someone? Yes, of course I did. You did? I didn't tell them who to arrest. I just told them to do their jobs. Aren't you worried that you pressured the police into making unnecessary assumptions? You would have done the same thing. You know it's harder than you think to run a town. If someone has to take the fall for the common good once in a while, so be it. Well, that's not very fair. Fairness is a luxury in government. It's sad, but it's true. I'll let you go. Bye. <laughs>